Hello, I'm Clyde Grubbs, and uh, I'm going to tell a story of what we call the Cherokee creation story. And I'm going to mention a little bit the Hebrew creation story, the one we call the Bible story. And um, it, I'm going to draw some contrasts uh, between the two, and I think you can find some wisdom in the contrasts. The Hebrew creation story, as you know, begins with the words, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the, God creates the heavens and the earth out of either chaos or out of nothing, depending on the particular translation. Out of um, So the, the, for, for the most part, theologians uh, in the Western tradition have posited that God created, there was nothing, and then God created the universe. Um, well, the Hebrew would say there was chaos, and then God created the universe. So I'm going to begin now with a Cherokee story, and you'll see the difference. Long, long time ago, when everything was all water, all the animals lived up in the sky. And it was very crowded. All the animals wanted more room. The, the animals began to wonder what what was below all that water, all that water, where everything was water on the that they could see, it's, it's, that wasn't in the clouds where they lived. And at last, they sent down animals and and birds, and they couldn't find anything to uh, to. To, so they could go down onto the uh, out of the clouds. It's very crowded, and it was not a lot of privacy up there in the clouds. So water beetle volunteered finally, and water beetle darted in every direction over the surface of the water, and it could not find any place to rest, and there was no land at all. And so their water beetle dived, dived into the, into the ocean, dived into the water, dived into the lakes. I don't know what it was, a river. It was big, though. Dived and brought up some soft mud. Then that mud began to, uh, to because he, the beaver kept, the, the beetle kept diving, diving into the water until he brought up more mud and more mud and mud and more mud. And pretty soon the mud was so big and so spread out in every direction, it became land. And now at first this land, the, the earth, was flat and soft and wet. The animals were not really able, if they just got down on that land, they, they would be like walking in mud. It's no good. So the animals were anxious to get out of the clouds where, and the birds were asked to go down, see if it was dry any place. So after a long time passed and they kept going down and say, it's, too, it's still too muddy. Uh, the animals were, uh, were ready and they sent down Buzzard. And Buzzard told him, them that to go and, and make make the land ready for them. Now this is the father of all buzzards, the great buzzard that we see now. And this buzzard flew over the earth low down to the ground where it was very soft and it sort of dried the land out with it. It was blowing air over mud, you know. But it was, for a long time, buzzard just flopped back and forth, back and forth. And when he reached the, the, a certain part of the world, he became very tired, very tired. And his wings began to flap and strike the ground. And whenever they, the, the, the wings struck the ground, there was a valley. And wherever the wings turned upward again, upward, upward, there was a mountain. And it kept going like this uh, over and over again. And that's what we call Cherokee country, because it's all mountains and valleys. And the Cherokees went to live in the valleys. Now we know that the, first, that the 
it, when the plants started to grow and when the for animals started to come down on the ground, they had to, in a sense, bless this new land that they were on. It was a, a blessing and the blessing ceremony was to, to be awake for seven nights, to be awake for seven days and seven nights. And this is a kind of uh, like very much like uh, what we call a uh, transition in life, a coming of age ceremony for Cherokee young people today. They, they're they asked to, at, when they get to a certain age to go out and stay awake for seven nights and seven days. And to watch, to watch. It's the watching that's the by which the spirit grows. So the, the animals and the plants were all asked to do this. And the first night, nearly every single animal and every single plant stayed awake. The next night, several dropped asleep. The third night, still more were asleep. At last, on the seventh night, only the owl, the panther, and two or more were still awake. Therefore, they were still given, they were given these, those animals were given the power to see in the dark, to go about as if it were daytime, to go about in the night and see everything. All others have to sleep at night. The plants, some of the trees went to sleep. But all, and at the, at when the, the, the seventh night came, only the cedar, the pine, the spruce, the holly, and the laurel were awake all seven nights. Therefore, they are always green. They're always a vital. But the others, because the uh, trees, they were told, because you did not stay awake, therefore you will lose your hair every winter. Now, you say, well, what about Adam and Eve? What about, well, there was no Adam and Eve here. The two-legged ones came along much, much later. Therefore, they were the least experienced creatures in all creation. Now, if a two-legged one does not learn from the creatures that were here before him, before the plants and from the animals, from the fishes, from the, the crawling ones, from those who fly in the sky, if they just don't learn from their elders, they make stupid mistakes. They may cause much mischief. They're just not very helpful. Now you can see the, the differences between these two creation stories is that the world is made what we know it now a place where there's land separated from water and there's a sky and birds fly in the sky and animals walk on the surface of the earth and fish fly, swim in the sea. It was made because, through the cooperative effort of, of animals and plants, from cooperative. It was a co-op, it was not something done by speaking, uh, God speaking and, and, and blowing wind over the surface. It was, it was a cooperative effort. And second, um, the other thing is that there was not, there's no passage in the creation story of the Cherokee where the, the, the great spirit or the great mystery says to human beings, I give you dominion over the earth of over all the plants and animals. And that, that you find it has caused a lot of mischief with the, the, the idea that, that human beings who are, get their creation story from the Hebrew Bible believe they're in charge, that they uh, can dominate animals and dominate plants. And ca that causes a real, real problem with the for the environment. So, um, those are some very important differences.